It's the 27th of July, 2016. The Intel Xeon D 1541 Mini Tower, also known as the SYS 5028D-TN14, Bundle 2 from Wired Zone is pictured over on the right there as a reference or kind of a size comparison as I'm about to unbox these first-in-world SYS E380 and SYS E200 dash 8D systems. This is pretty exciting for me because these are the first systems where we get to see something almost nook-like in size and price, only with a whole lot more network interface cables in person, up close, and I can compare sizes without having to scale pictures and try to estimate. More interesting to a lot of folks is decibels. How loud are these once I fire them up? compared to the stock fan untouched ZND that's only all of about uh, two months over two months old over there that's the ZND 1541 as I mentioned so that's eight core and in the box is a six and a four core system that are much more compact but otherwise identical all right so we have two boxes within so if you bought these systems you'd be getting the smaller inside boxes the outside box it's kind of irrelevant so have a look at that. There you go. I'm gonna have to do, keep on rolling here. It's late, so any photos I get will probably just be screenshots of the video. So E200, E300. Now this, in usual super micro fashion, you get a nice list of all the MAC addresses. So you can go ahead and make your DHP reservations before you even fire this thing up. Somewhere in the box it probably says pounds. I'm not spotting that, but already my impression is these are pretty darn svelte or lightweight. All right, I'm gonna start with the bigger one, the E300. And it looks like I have a tamper seal to deal with first. How about a little more precise? opening with an exacto blade to be clear i need to point out these are loners that i have temporarily to evaluate i do not own these units okay so now got the seal broken ready to open this up show you what is inside and how it's packaged. Okay, is there anything else in the box before we see the actual system? There is. Power cord. And parts. So I'm temporarily going to set this aside. To avoid any distractions while I continue to unbox just what came with the system. So, interesting. So we have a few uh, assemble yourself style parts here. Here's how we're going to get power to a traditional SATA 3 device, optionally. Probably a drive activity light of some sort or signal cable also yeah, everything you need to just go ahead and hook up a 2.5 inch drive. What else is in here? Power supply. There's the brick. First time I'm seeing this. I'm looking for the specs. DC output, 7 amps max, 12 volts. All right, so this does not put out anything but DC. We're not going to be using the motherboard's AC or DC, or sorry, the, the traditional multi rows of pins. We're just using this backplate connected external power brick, which is not very heavy. I'm going to want to grab a scale at some point here before I wrap up this video to show you comparative weights of these products. All right, and then finally, just one more part in the bag, and that is the PCI bracket cover. So if we're going to be using a PCI card, we've got a bracket and some screws that come along with it for fastening. So hopefully you got a good look at those parts. Not as good as taking the bag 
out of the mix and showing you the actual painted metal. Let's see if we can get the autofocus going here. Okay, there it is, a close look at the part. And the screw bag it comes with is merely labeled with a zero four on it. Okay, so I can go ahead and tuck that away. So we're done with the parts. It's time to reveal the server itself. So here we go. Setting the foam back over the box. Take the easily removable no tamper seal cover off. And there it is. First time I set eyes on one of these. And hopefully you're joining me just a few hours later if you're seeing this video on YouTube soon after I'm recording it just before midnight on July 27th. Okay, we got a good look at the back panel here. I'm going to readjust the room's lighting here to get you a little more direct lighting. GBIX would be needed if you're going to use fiber. Probably be good for me to flip the unit over and show it right side out. Here's our DC power input. I mentioned before, USB 3 obviously with the blue. 1 gig and 10 gig and another 10 gig for SFP. Maybe these are shared, right? I just don't know. And then finally in the PCI slot you can put an adoptional uh, quad gig E or quad 10 gig E PCIe adapter card. Or you can put some uh, second in dot two storage device in there, whatever you want. All right, on the side we have the serial number. And peeking inside a little bit, we can start to see some wiring. Here, if we want to do some sort of rail kit, we can do that. And now let's have a look at the front for the very first time. There it is. It actually looks better than the marketing picture. There's no um, film shipped over to protect it. There's a little bit of play in the power switch. Simple power switch, reset. That's about it. Unlike the marketing photos, I'm not seeing any colorful wire showing by the bezel, which looked a little weird in the marketing photos. Probably got some fingerprints on there already. There's a look at the top. And finally a look at the bottom. You've now seen all sides. So, I'd say it's time to set that aside. We'll get out a screwdriver and take off the lid in a minute. time to open up the second box. So here we go. The E200. So, getting out that same blade, time to break the seal and check out the next box. I could probably do this smarter this time. It's weird doing things on film because sometimes you're trying to not block the camera angle, but I'm better off not thinking about the camera for the moment. Okay, all that tape is now broken. Ready for me to pop this open. And here we go. Making sure the camera's still rolling, has focus. Take out the accessories again. And take out the server and set it aside. So, very similar packaging for the two boxes. Now, what's inside the box? Looks about the same. Let's see, is this brick a little smaller? 60 watts max, 5 amps. Right. And a power cord. And the same SATA adapter cable. But the parts bag looks a little different. We've got ourselves some sort of rubber pad. And it's four feet to put on the unit, so they're more expecting you to put that on a countertop and not vibrate. HDD screws. And these look like fan screws, the way they're threaded. And then finally, some sort of adapter bracket with a single set screw. I have to think about what that's about. Locking connector of some sort. 
So, so yeah, we have some different parts sold between the different units. And I'm not aware of a parts list out there, but now you've seen exactly what the ship group comes with. Okay, so now I did promise I finally get a look at the server itself. And here we go. They very much look like size and form factor box. Bigger, admittedly, but a little smaller than the Skull Trail Nook. Here it is, the E200. We're looking at the side of it. And there it is, we're looking at the front bezel. Okay, I've got a light shining right in there, and again, we're not seeing ugly colored cables, so that's a good thing. A little bit of dust on the top surface there, so we're going to show some fingerprints and dust. Other side has serial number and a peak inside where the power supply connector goes. And there's the back bezel. Again, DC, USB 3, management, IPMI, I forgot to mention that in the other video. Blanking plates here, two 1 gig and two 10 gig. VGA. And that's about it. So what could that bracket be for? I don't know. I have to figure that out later, I guess. There's always a mystery for the next the next time. So, taking off the lids, weighing these on the scale, looking at relative watt burn. That's going to have to be the next video, because it is getting very late. Certainly good to go ahead and get these next to each other. And before I go scratching any paint, I think I'd much prefer putting on those rubber feet, which I'm kind of assuming a pretty good guess on where they'd be located would be over the screw holes. So you remember this rubber pad? I'll go ahead and do that, putting these on now. Is covering that screw hole going to be enough? Is it going to lift the unit high enough to not have the units touching each other at any corner. I guess I'll find out soon enough. Now that's the wrong way to pull it off the backing. That did not work out so well. There we go. Now is it a mistake to cover these mount points? No they're on the bottom and those are motherboard standoffs you're seeing so obscuring those motherboard posts certainly not any kind of big deal that I can think of be good to have those look good for pictures and have them straight and I got that a little crooked the goo feels very good I don't think I hurt anything by relocating it there pretty quickly now there's no screw here to cover other than the way up here and I think that would look a little funny so I'm going to take the liberty of lining it up and going with that position. All right, so now we have feet. Here's the back of the unit. Let's place it down and see if there's a problem. And the answer is no, no problem. Flipping it around, no problem, meaning no metal on metal. Now you're seeing comparative sizes. Also looks good. Finally, how does this look next to the original? Here is the original Super Server Mini Tower. And I think it's time to get a little lower camera angle, get you a better look. And here we go. Okay, how about we get the front showing. There you go. Front showing. Comparative sizes, pretty obvious. And to be fair, this would slide back a little. Now you're looking at a very good view of the front. Now let's head around back live while on camera. Again, this video is going to be a little bit rushed. Not as well produced as some other ones, but really it's just a physical unboxing. Much more interesting will be when I plug it in and measure the watt burn and the decibel 
output using a dB meter. So, I think that's it for tonight. Hope you enjoyed this first in-world Take Your Try exclusive look at the SYS E300 8D and SYS E200 8D. Stay tuned for more videos soon. Thank you for watching and for visiting tinkertry.com.